Magikarp is the worst Pokemon ever. So I asked, is it possible to beat all of Pokemon Legends Arceus with just one single useless Magikarp? This was an insanely painful and stupid idea. Here's how it went. I named my character Mr. Masochist as a sign of what's to come. God hands us a big fat L before tossing me from the sky. We meet Professor Laventon, who welcomes us into the village and offers us a Pokemon. These three look awesome, so which one is mine? Oh, no, no, these are mine. Here is your Pokemon. Isn't it a beauty? Uh, yeah, very beautiful, thanks. All right, kid, go get him. He's so dead, I hope we get to eat him. So now we had our fish and nothing would stop us. Moments later, we were stopped by Volo for a battle. All right, let's see what powerful, destructive moves our Magikarp has. Splash. The user just flops and splashes around to no effect at all. This is why Magikarp is so terrible. Splash is the only move it knows. Now, you might be thinking, well, yeah, but doesn't Magikarp at least get some moves later on? Nope. It used to get access to other moves, but for Legends Arceus, Game Freak took one look at Magikarp and said, we gotta nerf that. So in this game, Magikarp only knows Splash and will never learn anything else. So to beat this challenge, we'll have to beat full teams of powerful Pokemon with one Magikarp that can only learn Splash. On that note, I want to hear your predictions. In the comments, let me know whether you think we can actually beat this challenge. Now it was time for our debut battle. Magikarp splashed its little heart out while Togepi viciously tore him to pieces. Our first battle and we'd already lost. The game still lets us advance though, purely out of pity. And in a challenge like this, I'll take all the pity I can get. Now we can enter the Obsidian Fieldlands, and after completing the tutorial, we're welcomed into the Galaxy team as a member of the Survey Corps. We then meet Commander Kamado, who instantly throws me to the ground. Ow, that hurt. Can you do it again, please, Mr. Masochist? You're a sick individual. After depositing the other Pokemon we'd caught at Ram Ranch, now we had some freedom to explore. Our top priority is getting some levels onto our Magikarp, which seems difficult, right? I mean, we can't even knock out any Pokemon since we only know Splash. But in this game, there are some other ways of getting EXP that don't require us to knock out any Pokemon. For example, catching Pokemon is one way of doing this. However, there's another method, and this one's my favorite. By brutally throwing our Magikarp at berry trees, or swinging it around and using its scaly carcass to break rocks, we're awarded a small amount of EXP each time. So I spent the next hour using my Magikarp as a baseball bat, as well as catching some Pokemon. I found that becoming a bug catcher was the best bet, with Dustox and Beautifly giving great EXP for this point in the game. Now my Magikarp was at level 15 and wait, you look different. Did you become shiny? Well, you don't sparkle, but uh, whatever. I guess we have a shiny Magikarp. Yay! I looked him square in the eye and said, here's your Pokemon. I just dropped the Magikarp. Just, just dropped it on the ground. You should have seen the look on his face. Uh, he's probably dead now. Yeah, I'll just feed him to Cyndaquil. Hey guys, we're back. Holy hell, you're alive? I mean, of course you're alive, my boy. Good work. We get our one star rank from Silene before Akari challenges us to a fight. Now she has a Pikachu and Magikarp does not get along with electricity. So all Magikarp could do was splash around until Pikachu gave it the electric chair. Yet another loss. However, this is another fight that you don't actually need to win to progress the game. There's plenty of those, and Legends Arceus has some of the toughest fights in the series, but in a grueling challenge like this, I'll take any free pass that the game is willing to give me. After the battle, we meet Zisu, the person who teaches your Pokemon moves, if they can learn any... Magikarp is the best dragon Pokemon, so it's only fitting that this video is sponsored by Dragon City, a free-to-play mobile game that lets you collect over a thousand awesome dragons. Just like Pokemon, in Dragon City, you'll power up by earning EXP, learn new moves, and battle against other players. The designs look awesome, like this obsidian dragon, but personally, my favorite is the mud dragon. He looks like he eats crayons. You can expand your empire by breeding two compatible dragons to create a hybrid. For example, my flame and sea dragons spawned a cute little cloud dragon who I lovingly named Clump. 
But you know what's even cooler? Zombies. That's why iconic characters from The Walking Dead are now available in Dragon City. So click the link in the description or scan this QR code to get involved. You'll receive a special starter pack of 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the epic zombie nature dragon. Download Dragon City and start your empire right now. Pikachu. Back in the Obsidian Fieldlands, and now the heat really turns up because we have to take on Mai and her Munchlax. Not only is Munchlax incredibly strong, but this is a fight that we actually have to beat. So Mai made fun of my silly little balls and then slapped my Magikarp into its grave. This is the first real hurdle. So how do we beat this? Well, it's true that Magikarp only knows Splash, which does nothing. However, once all 40 of its Splash PP is drained, only then can Magikarp use Struggle, a 50 power move. The catch is that Struggle also damages the user, which makes using it multiple times in a row really challenging. Anyway, I had to tediously drain all of my Splash PP against the weak Wurmple that were in the area. This took ages, and I won't bother showing this Splash Fest again, because, well, this is pretty much the entire experience. Enjoy. However, after our Magikarp has taken 40 trips to Splash Mountain, now we can use Struggle, which didn't even one-shot a level 4 Wurmple. We are in trouble. Regardless, dragging my fish behind me, I stepped up to face Mai. All right, Magikarp, give me your best struggle. Wait, what? It did nothing. And I still took recoil damage? Struggle is meant to have 100% accuracy. What is going on? That's it. I'm renaming you from Magikarp to Magic Crap. You suck. Anyway, I did some testing. Most of the time, Struggle just wouldn't land. I didn't have any trouble with using it on wild Pokemon, just Munchlax. However, sometimes it would land, but even then only did around a quarter of Munchlax's health and we'd soon fall afterwards. So putting aside the disobedience of my fish, we needed to power up Magikarp. While Magikarp's stats suck, the one advantage we have in this fight is that Magikarp has reasonable physical defense. This helps since Munchlax is a physical attacker. Besides that and our solid speed, Magikarp's stats are straight garbage. So I grinded some EXP using the same methods as before. We can also take the Pokemon we catch and grind them down into grit items, which basically act like fish food for Magikarp. These raise our stats, giving us a much needed boost. So after reaching the level two survey rank, I return to rematch Mai with my now level 25 Magikarp. Magikarp still won't land its attacks, so I'll have to live with that. Just another layer of frustration and pain for Mr. Masochist. Although being at level 25 lets me tank Munchlax's attacks a lot better. So I tweaked my strategy by alternating between trying to land struggle on one turn and then healing up with a potion on the next turn, I can keep Magikarp alive. But by no means was this easy, because landing struggle is, well, a struggle. On this attempt, I burned through my whole supply of 13 potions, only landing two struggles in the process. Why is this move so broken? Garp. Garp, garp. Do something! After almost an hour, I finally hit some luck, with Magikarp's two brain cells eventually sparking, allowing it to land enough struggles to finally take down Munchlax. But if it took me that long to beat the first mandatory battle, how on earth would Magikarp be able to defeat trainers with full teams of powerful Pokemon? This was going to be rough. As a reward for winning, my heals up my Magikarp. Uh, can you not? Now I have to go and drain its PP again. After that grueling grind, you might be thinking, well, at least we can progress a bit now, right? Wrong. Because about 30 seconds later, we come across this pest. Core. This battle is way worse than the Munchlax fight. Firstly, Krikatoon has the move Absorb, which is super effective against Magikarp while also healing Krikatoon. But much worse than that is the fact that the game heals you before every single attempt. For those playing along at home, this means we can't use Struggle because we will always start this fight with 40 Splash PP. What a nightmare. So I needed to power up my Magikarp and noticed that it could evolve. This was my chance. With this, Magikarp would become an unstoppable beast capable of mass destruction and- What? My fish is broken. I want a new one. I hate you. Uh, something seems very wrong with this Pichu. Anyway, how do we deal with Krikatoon? Well, we have to beat it and we can't use Struggle. This really leaves only one option. 
PP stalling. In the same way that we drained our Splash PP to use Struggle, we could stall out Cricketoon's PP to force it into using Struggle, eventually taking itself out with the recoil damage. Is this tedious and painful? Absolutely. But that's just how Mr. Masochist likes it. So after crafting a war chest of potions, I returned to Cricketoon, ready for a rematch. And even then, I still lost. By using an agile style absorb, Cricketoon got two attacks in a row before finishing me off with a second strong style absorb immediately after. Ugh. I was already regretting this challenge. Was my suffering going to be worth it? Probably not. But it might be if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. After grinding Magikarp to level 30, I tried tackling Cricketoon once more and still lost. However, this time Cricketoon needed a critical hit to take me out. So I just had to dodge every critical hit. Easy. On the next attempt, things were going much smoother. Cricketoon knows four moves with a combined PP of 120. So I had to sit there force feeding my fish potions while Cricketoon slapped it around over and over. By no means was this quick, but it was effective. After around 25 minutes of stalling, Cricketoon was finally out of PP and began using Struggle. A few turns later, it died to its own recoil damage and we had finally beaten... Just the second mandatory battle. We were already struggling this hard to beat a level 12 Cricketoon. Just how bad was this challenge going to get? Hang on, are you getting more yellow? Could it be a special shiny? The noble lord, Cleavor, is enraged, so Kamado decides to send the guy with only a Magikarp to fix it. Makes sense to me. After running all the way to Cleavor's shrine, we're confronted by Leanne, who we have to defeat. Thing is, he only has a level 15 Gumi, and this ball of goo is pretty trash. Like every other battle this run, I have to wait for Magikarp to actually decide to contribute. Gorp, gorp, gorp. But by healing up with potions like we did against Munchlax, I keep Magikarp alive for long enough to land two struggles, burying Gumi without much trouble. Oh, he's not dead yet. I really wanted to eat him. <laughs> After playing a banging tune on our flute, gorp, 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 gorp. Weirdeer agrees to carry us around on its back. Anyway, we return to Cleavor's shrine, and this time we're confronted by the Pearl Clan boss, Irida. Just like Leanne, she won't let us pass unless we defeat her. Although, Irida is a cut above Leanne. Her Glaceon is really strong. On top of that, Glaceon also knows Quick Attack, a move which basically lets Glaceon attack two times in a row. After the struggle recoil damage, these two attacks are enough to KO my fish. Once again, we were in a rough spot. I leveled up Magikarp to 35 before trying to rematch with Irida's Ice Doggo, and this attempt was going really well. I landed my very first struggle, which, nice job Magikarp, and was stalling nicely. Magikarp charged up its next struggle, but fell just short of getting the KO. And sadly, Magikarp fell. So close, yet so far. With that crushing loss, I had to go back to the slow and cheesy strategy of PP stalling. But this still isn't easy. As we already saw, Glaceon can combo a quick attack into a Swift consecutively. I can just survive this combo, but if Swift crits, I die. And since Swift has 20 PP, I had to dodge 20 critical hits. I prayed to RNGesus and finally had some luck. I got through all 20 of Glaceon Swifts, healing up in between attacks. Once Glaceon started using Powder Snow, I knew that I was in the clear. Neither of her remaining attacks are very threatening, so after some more cheese, Glaceon struggled itself to death. Having seen our devastating Pokemon skill, Irida had no choice but to let us take on the noble lord of the woods, Cleavor. Alright, Magikarp, go! Corp, corp. No! You're useless! I'll just do it myself. I dodged Cleavor's attacks, which made it run headfirst into a wall over and over again. By slapping it with a barrage of bombs, we were able to quell the noble lord Cleavor without taking a single point of damage. No thanks to you. With the experience gained from the battle, Magikarp was ready to evolve, and surely it'll turn into something good this time. What? You're still a Magikarp, but now you're blue? What is wrong with my fish? After reporting back to Kamado, we're given our next mission, to explore the Crimson Mai lands. Hey Kamado, just one more thing. Of course, what is it Mr. Masochist? Can you throw me to the ground again?
Mr. Masochist, get out of my office. As we approach the gate, we're stopped by Akari for another battle. She has two Pokemon now, so this would be tough if we actually had to beat her. Since winning this fight isn't necessary, I have Magikarp splash his little heart out before being slapped around by Mime Jr. We take those. Now we can access the Crimson Mylands, where we meet Kalaba, who immediately calls me a hoe. Despite her rudeness, we'll have to help her retrieve a stolen artifact. Before that, we've got to take on Volo. But this is another fight that we don't have to win. So Magikarp can be a splashing punching bag, while Togepi tears us to shreds. Such prodigious strength. Uh, were we watching the same fight? Anyway, in our search for the missing artifact, we eventually find the culprits, the Miss Fortune Sisters. We have to battle Coin, and this is a battle that we actually have to win. She uses a Toxicroak, which is pretty strong, but since it only knows two moves for a combined PP of 35, I decided that PP stalling was my best option. Although this still requires a ton of luck. Toxicroak's Vanishock just barely doesn't kill Magikarp, so we have to dodge 15 critical hits in a row. And even if you make it past that, once Toxicroak starts using Rock Smash, it's still risky. See, Rock Smash has a chance to lower my defense. On top of that, it can also use an Agile Rock Smash to get two attacks in a row. So if it lowers my defense, I can still die if the second Rock Smash crits. Basically, I need a ton of luck. Fortunately, God was looking out for me this time, as Magikarp was able to dodge every critical hit while guzzling down potions every single turn. I came really close to losing so many times, but Magikarp hung on, and eventually, Toxicroak struggled itself to death. The way you treat your Magikarp as a punching bag is unholy. You're the real evil one here. Just hand over the artifact, or my Magikarp will splash really angrily. Fine, just take it. We return the fragment to Kalaba, who translates the sacred prophecy. It says, the worst is yet to come. And look, she's not wrong, because this challenge is going to get way harder once I have to take on full teams of strong Pokemon with only my fish. Having earned Kalaba's trust, she asks us to help with calming the big bear, Ursa Luna. But to do that, we need to beat it in a battle. This is deadly. Ursa Luna is the strongest Pokemon we've faced by far, with some insane stats and powerful moves. Its most powerful move is Slash. It's kind of like Splash, except where Splash has an extra P, Slash has an extra 70 base power. Like I said, pretty similar. Anyway, Slash alone nearly kills Magikarp in one shot. This means I can't use Struggle, since the recoil damage would kill me. On top of that, Slash has a high critical hit chance of 12.5%, so dodging all the crits while draining its PP is unlikely. I did try, however, failed miserably over and over again. Although, I kept trying until finally getting past all of Ursa Luna's slashes. This was the run. Until it wasn't the run, because Ursa Luna whipped out a new strategy. Turns out the Big Bear can also combo an Agile Bulldoze into a Play Rough back to back, which absolutely decimates my Magikarp. Ugh. Clearly, my current approach wasn't going to work. So what can we do? Well, our problem is that Magikarp is too frail. We needed to bulk him up, and I had just the thing. Back in town, we can buy the crafting recipe for the Orc's Guard item. By collecting the necessary ingredients, we can craft the Orc's Guard, which raises the user's defense for five turns. After grinding Magikarp to level 40 and stocking up on a ton of Orc's Guards, it was time to rematch Ursa Luna. On turn one, I immediately set up my Orc's Guard, and this makes all the difference. Now, not even a critical hit slash can kill me in one shot. Since the Orcs Guard wears off after five turns, I have to continue setting them up while also recovering my HP. This fight took an insanely long time, but our new strategy worked a treat. Eventually, Ursa Luna was left with only Bulldoze PP, and at this point, our win was sealed. Soon after, the giant bear struggled itself to death before the might of my blue fish. Ursa Luna was calmed, and by playing the Forbidden Tune, we can now ride the big bear. And Ursa Luna has a very well-trained nose. It can even sniff out people who haven't liked the video. Oh God, it's noticed you. Quick, like the video to protect yourself before it's too late. Anyway, we can also use Ursa Luna to sniff out the missing warden, Irazu. Once we've found her, we're clear to take on the next noble lord, Lilligan. As we know from our previous noble fight, our Magikarp is dead weight here. So I take over and evacuated the dance floor. Before long, I'd slapped Lilligan with enough bombs to calm it down without taking a single hit. With another noble quelled, we report our progress to Kamado, who gives us our next mission, to investigate the Cobalt Coastlands. Once we arrive, we're stopped by Irida for a 
battle. I guess it was bring your child to work day, because this time, her Glaceon brought an EV along with it, and we have to battle both at the same time. These multi-battles are going to be a problem, but not this time. Winning here isn't mandatory, so Magikarp takes an almighty three-shoe beating. Ah, now I feel better. I guess treating Magikarp like a punching bag really helped her relieve some stress. Anyway, we learn that there's no Noble Lord of this area, and Irida asks us to help fix that. Once we find the Warden, Polina, we hear that the previous Lord Arcanine drowned. That's when a stroke of genius hit me. Polina, I've got it. I'll trade your Growlithe for my Magikarp, who will take the throne as the noble lord of this area. The best part? He's a fish, so he won't drown like the previous lord. That's the worst idea I've ever heard, and I've never been so insulted. So that's a maybe? All right, well, you get back to me when you're ready. Our next stop is to visit Iskan, who will help us use a fish to cross the ocean. This seems silly though. I mean, I have my own fish. Why can't I use that? Oh, right. Iskan forces us to become a Ghostbuster, catching a chef Dusclops that he needs to cook Baskalegion's favorite food. That all makes sense to me. With Baskalegion's food ready, we head down to the beach and summon the powerful beast. That's one fine looking fish. Why doesn't mine look like that? Basca Legion gives me the splash plate, which feels very fitting for a challenge like this. Out of nowhere, the Misfortune sisters appear and steal Growlithe. Hang on, if I don't get Growlithe back, then Polina won't be able to trade for my Magikarp. I've got to do something. We chased after the thieves with the help of an actually competent fish for a change. And once we reach Fire Pit Island, we confront the thieves. This will be our biggest challenge yet. We have to beat all three of the Misfortune sisters back to back without healing in between. To make matters worse, Worse, Clover has a level 35 of Bomber Snow, a grass type Pokemon that also knows Energy Ball, which is an incredibly strong grass move. She's our first opponent, and even after setting up an Orc's Guard, Energy Ball still decimates Magikarp in one shot. It was instantly clear that level 40 just wasn't going to cut it. And even after getting Magikarp to level 50 and seasoning it with grit items, Magikarp was still no match. Even at level 60, a Bomber Snow just switched to a strong style energy ball, which still sends my fish to the Shadow Realm. But finally, there was a sliver of hope after Magikarp reached level 70, because only now can I survive an energy ball and begin stalling out the 10 PP. This attempt was going perfect until... Yeah, turns out Energy Ball also has a 20% chance to lower my defense. And once my defense boost is removed, we're back to square one. A Bomber Snow then sucks the life out of Magikarp with just one Energy Ball. Ah! Now we had a chance, but the odds were stacked against me. I would need to dodge both a critical hit and the 20% chance for the defense drop 10 times in a row. The combined chance of this happening is only 7%. That's my success rate to stall out just the very first move on the very first Pokemon. Even then, there's still three other Pokemon to deal with. This was insane, but that's just how Mr. Masochist likes it. And so we stepped up to face Clover. And every time I got slapped around in the RNG Hellfire, it was brutal. But after so many attempts, I finally hit some luck because on this one, I stalled out a Bomber Snow's 10 energy balls. Now it was down to only its ice type moves, which barely tickled my fish. So it's pretty safe to have Magikarp do its splash flashy dance until a bomber snow eventually rage quits life. That's Clover taken care of. Next up is Coin and her Toxicroak. It isn't anywhere near as big of a threat as a Bomber Snow, so we can stall out its moves easily. Although it is annoying to deal with the constant poison damage and Rock Smash lowering my defense. But overall, Toxicroak soon follows a Bomber Snow into the next life. Now it was down to only Charm, but this is the first battle against two Pokemon that we actually have to win. And after all the struggle I went through to make it this far, I was so nervous. Nervous. Charm opens with a Rhydon, but I counter her with my trap card, Rhydon D. Her Rhydon isn't too scary, especially since I move first and can set up an Orc's Guard. Its attacks didn't do much at all, so I actually tried using Struggle again, and I guess the Struggle accuracy curse had been lifted, because now it was actually landing and doing solid damage. At this rate, it was going to take four struggles to KO Rhydon, but I needed to make sure that Magikarp was healed up when I got the KO, so that I can take a hit from the incoming Gengar. So with that in mind, I fired off my third struggle and... Are you kidding me? The one time I rely on you to attack, 
you get a critical hit at the worst possible time. Since I hadn't healed yet, Gengar came in and ruined my day with a single strong style Venishok slaughtering my fish. Corp, corp. No, you did not do good. I'm gonna throw you into the lava. Ah, ah. I knew this run was going to be painful, so I had no choice but to keep trying. And this time, a bomber snow was a demon. I just couldn't catch a break. Attempt after attempt was denied by this unforgiving snowman. And as each failed attempt rolled by, my disdain for Magikarp and that damn critical hit grew. It did not come easy, but after about an hour of failing miserably, I finally got lucky enough to make it past a Bomber Snow's energy balls. Just like last time, finishing a Bomber Snow from here is a piece of cake, and Coin's Toxicroak gets a similar treatment. So once again, we were back at charm. But this time, my strategy was different. Instead of finishing it off with struggle, I decided to take the much slower, but much safer approach of stalling out its PP. Reason being, this means that Gengar will come in after ride on attacks. So unlike last time, I should have a turn to heal up before Gengar gets to attack. So I patiently stall against Rhydon, cycling between restoring my HP with potions and restoring my defense buffs with Orc's guards. This worked great. Interestingly though, once Rhydon ran out of PP, Charm just straight switched into Gengar. I continued stalling against the spooky ghost until it missed a hypnosis. Since I still had plenty of HP left, I attacked with struggle and this did over half of Gengar's health. Thankfully, I then tank a Venoshock before healing back up. Gengar does solid damage with Dark Pulse, but at this range, I can finish Gengar off with one last struggle. Charm still has her ride on, but since it's out of PP, it can only use struggle, which Magikarp survives, before we finally watch the last of Charm's Pokemon go down. Damn, that felt good. That was a grind. Although it's gonna get way worse later on. After the battle, the little Growlithe evolves into an angry noble Lord Arcanine. And of course, it's up to me and Magikarp to stop it. Uh, on second thought, this guy's pretty scary. Fine, take Magikarp, but just let me go free. After dodging a barrage of attacks from Arcanine, we smacked it with enough farms to calm the giant beast. Once again, Mr. Masochist and his fish had saved the day. Hey Iskan, how about you trade your crummy Basca Legion for my awesome Magikarp? Shut up, Mr. Masochist, no one wants your damn fish. Oh, why do I get stuck with Magikarp? Oh, now it's trying to evolve again. Hurry it up, we all know you're not getting any stronger. Whoa, Magikarp, are you feeling okay? <coughs> nurse, nurse, is my Magikarp okay? Oh no, this is bad. What, what's wrong? It's a serious case, one of the worst I've ever seen. It could be fatal, but what does he have? Ligma. What's Ligma? I'm sorry, child, he doesn't have long. You'll be fine, Magikarp, we always pull through. After reporting back to Kamado, we're given our next mission to explore the Coronet Highlands. But before we set out, Adamant stops us for a battle. Just like the Iridophyte, this one is a two-on-one, and just like the Iridophyte, we don't actually have to win. So after Magikarp gets beaten up by a plant, we're all clear to enter the Coronet Highlands. Our guide is this dude, Ingo, and just like us, he's from the future. I remember, I had a brother back in my own time. I know how you feel, I've got a brother too, Mr. Fister. We're really close. Mr. Fister and Mr. Masochist, huh? You guys sound like quite a good pair. We continued traveling with Ingo until coming across Melly, the jerk with some ridiculously luscious hair. He likes the noble electrode as an angry little acorn, so forces us into a battle. I was hoping this would be another freebie, but turns out we actually have to win this one. So now it was time to take on Melly for real. Since this is a 1v1, I felt confident that I could struggle my way through until... Oh god, the curse is back! Since I couldn't land any struggles, I had to once again sit there like an idiot, PP stalling because my fish refused to cooperate. Anyway, since we had to get so strong to beat the Misfortune Sisters, beating Melly's Scun Tank is no sweat as it eventually falls to struggle recoil. But Melly will be back in a little bit with a 3 on 1, which I am not looking forward to. Just up ahead, we come across this Bronzor who is unwell, and this woman just heals it up, no trouble at all. Okay, but why can't anyone cure my Magic Carp's Ligma. Anyway, apparently we need to beat Ingo if we want to climb these cliffs. Magic Carp can jump pretty high though, so I feel like we could get up there on our own if we really wanted. But his team is tough. 
Ingo has three Pokemon, including the part grass type, part spaghetti type, Tangela. The last grass type we went up against was a nightmare, so I am not looking forward to this. Ingo leads with a Machoke, who isn't too hard to take out. My struggles were landing again, which I still can't explain. And Machoke also uses double edge, which hurts itself. So pretty quickly, Machoke went down. But next is the scariest Pokemon on his team. <laughs> I thought Tangela wouldn't be too bad. I mean, it's Tangela. Look at it. I was wrong. Because even with full health and boosted defense, a single strong style energy ball turned my Magikarp into fish paste. Clearly, we needed to power up. So I threw some grit rocks at my Magikarp, boosting our stats to level 10, as well as reaching level 75. But I'm not done yet. We can also buy the recipe for the Orcs Power Guard. This is an upgrade over the Orcs Guard that we've been using thus far, as this item also boosts our attack stat. With these upgrades to my fish, I marched back up the mountain for a rematch with Ingo. Just like last time, Machoke isn't too hard to deal with. However, I do make sure to take it down only when I have two consecutive turns. The reason for this is that I need to heal up before Tangela gets a chance to attack. This goes exactly to plan, and with the extra stat buffs to Magikarp, this time around, we can survive an energy ball as long as we dodge a crit. I keep healing as Tangela keeps hitting me with energy balls until my paralysis wears off and Tangela tries to use a stun spore, but this time it missed. This gives me a chance to use struggle, which fell just short of getting the KO. I was paralyzed on the next turn, but with one more struggle, Magikarp slaughters the ball of spaghetti. Bon Appetit. Last up is Ingo's ace, Gliscor. It's a strong Pokemon, but not as threatening as Tangela. So with some healing and a few struggles, Gliscor went down and Ingo had been defeated. This lets us ride the literal Wolverine until we reach the top of the cliffs. But once we reach the summit, we're stopped by Melee again. Only this time, we have to battle him in a 3 versus 1 all at the same time. What makes matters worse is that Magikarp just picks a random target to attack when I use Struggle. This led to some frustrating scenarios where I couldn't hit the Pokemon I wanted, causing Magikarp to fall as a result. I lost several attempts but I knew that I had a chance if the luck went my way. Until this attempt. I move first and immediately set up an Orc's Power Guard so that I can tank all three attacks from Melee's gang. I take huge damage, but now get two turns in a row. I use the first to attack, with Struggle randomly hitting Skuntank, bringing it below half health. The poison damage then leaves me on just two HP, but I can use my second turn to heal back up. After some stalling with potions, I tried to fire off another struggle, but turns out it can still do nothing. I hate this mechanic. After healing up once again, I eventually land another struggle, which hits Zubat this time, taking it out in one shot. Now that we're up against two Pokemon, it's a little more manageable, but still risky as I get low a few times. But like a champion, Magikarp holds firm, and the next struggle that actually lands ends up finishing Skuntank. This leaves only Skaroopy, who is no match alone for the might of Magikarp. One more struggle takes it down, sealing the win. And Melly is not taking it well. Adamant steps in, and with his help, we're clear to take on the next noble lord. Problem is, Electrode is like the hardest hard counter to Magikarp possible. It's a grass and electric type, which is awful for my fish. I did try to battle, but Magikarp was electrocuted and fried instantly. So I took over and dodged the giant electric balls, slapping Electrode with a barrage of bombs, calming down the giant acorn. Melly drops to his knees like it's a truck stop bathroom before Ingo gives a passionate speech about the bonds between people and Pokemon. Yep, my bond with Magikarp is strong, because our bond is made out of an iron chain. Very strong. After reporting our success back to Kamado, we're given our next mission, to quell the final noble lord. But before we can leave the town, Akari stops us for one final showdown. We haven't beaten her a single time in this challenge, and this fight is no different. Magikarp just sat there and got slapped around by Ash Ketchum's dad. We lost very quickly, but this is the final battle of the game that we don't actually have to win. From here on out, Magikarp will have to conquer every single battle. This was not going to be easy. Now we can enter the Alabaster Icelands. It's rather chilly here, isn't it? Yeah, my nips could cut diamonds right now, and Magikarp doesn't seem to be coping too well either.
After a quick dash across the snowfields, we meet Garrick, who has a bad attitude. After slapping him across the face with Magikarp, he forces us to battle, but this went surprisingly well. Magikarp is actually kind of good now. This battle is a two on one, but my almighty fish handles this with ease. My confidence was growing. I started thinking that maybe this challenge wouldn't be too bad after all. What a fool I was. Apparently, we need a flying Pokemon to reach the top of this giant rock. Uh, yeah, it's not like we already have someone capable of getting that high. Anyway, we need Braviary's help, so chase down its warden, Sabi. This brings us to Snowpoint Temple, where these huge metal doors are in the way. But a little trick I've learned is that if you hit Magikarp into doors hard enough, they'll simply open up. Neat. At the top of the temple, we come across Sabi, and this is a fight that horrifies me. She uses three powerful Pokemon, including an electric type, and to make matters worse, we have to take on all of them at the same time. Let me tell you, I got destroyed. This fight is a nightmare. Let me tell you why. The two support Pokemon will constantly paralyze, poison, or burn you, which makes surviving multiple attacks a pain, especially when you have to tank attacks from three Pokemon. If that's not enough, keep in mind that Magikarp picks its own target randomly, and struggle just flat out doesn't work most of the time. This meant I got slapped around over and over and over again. Even after raising Magikarp's level, I continued getting destroyed. Until, after hours of suffering, I eventually just went all the way to level 100. Our fish had reached its final form, but from here, we wouldn't be able to get any stronger. And I was still getting ripped apart by the RNG until I finally got a crumb of luck. On turn one, I set up my Orc's Power Guard as usual, but importantly, both Electivire and Magmorta were just looking around. Rhyperia does land high horsepower, but now I get two consecutive turns. I tried struggling, and Magikarp still refuses to comply. The next one lands though, finishing Magmorta in one shot. After all that recoil damage, my HP is getting low. However, Electivire opts to paralyze me with Thunder Wave, and Magikarp just survives another attack from Rhyperia. I spend the next few turns healing up Magikarp while restoring my Orc's Power Guard. Once I finally get an opening to attack, thankfully this one lands, finishing off Electivire. With the two support Pokemon taken care of, now it's a one-on-one. -on -one. From here, victory is all but guaranteed as I slowly grind down Rhyperia, finishing it off with a few struggles. Finally, we've beaten three powerful Pokemon at the same time with just one fish. That took way too long, and that's not even the hardest fight. With Sabi defeated, we're clear to challenge Braviary. We establish our dominance with a few struggles, giving us the power of flight, effectively turning our fish into a flying fish. Now we can soar down and grab the eternal ice before charging up the mountain to face the final noble lord, Avalug. Holy, this thing is huge. Magikarp really wasn't moving much after our last beatdown against Sabi, so I took the lead on this one. Ow, ow, ow! I was on the brink of death, but just landed one more bomb to barely scrape by with the win over Avalug. Damn, so this is how it feels to get beat up. With all the nobles quelled, now Magikarp could finally retire. Oh. That's not good. Anyway, Kamado's been licking Politoads again because for some reason, he thinks I orchestrated this mess. Dude, I only have a useless fish. How could I have pulled this off? You caused this, you better fix it. Oh, fine. Magikarp, I need you for one last job. Gork, gork, gork. Glad to have you back, buddy. To stop the unfolding disaster, we have to craft the red chain by completing the three lake trials. These all involve a battle against a strong alpha Pokemon, but since these are 1v1s, our Magikarp can struggle its way through these no problem. We also have to pass the tests given by each of the lake trio. Your emotions, share them with me. 12 seconds later. Whoa, you are into some messed up stuff. Just get out of my house. Azelf wants to test my willpower, but seriously, I've been getting slapped around for an eternity using only Magikarp. I think my persistence is already clear. Fair point. With the red chain now crafted, Magikarp and I head for Spear Pillar. But on the way, we're stopped by Benny, who, after doing some ninjutsu, reveals himself as our next opponent. He has a team of powerful Pokemon, and this is our first time taking on a team of four. This would be Magikarp's toughest challenge yet. 
Benny slapped me around, but it didn't take too long for me to figure out a strategy. See, Benny leads with his Miss Magius, which is a problem. It can put Magikarp to sleep with Hypnosis and drop my defenses with Shadow Ball. So I have to be careful. I immediately set up my Orc's Power Guard, and importantly, Miss Magius missed its Hypnosis this time around. This lets me land a struggle for big damage. Benny heals, but one more struggle brings Miss Magius right back to low HP. I then stall for a bit until Magikarp gets two consecutive turns. This lets me reset my Orc's Power Guard before landing the final struggle onto Miss Magius. Next up is Sneasla, who hits hard. However, Magikarp's physical defense is way higher than its special, so Sneasla is actually less of a threat. We can tank close combats pretty well, and this move has the extra benefit of also lowering Sneasla's defense. This means that after some stalling, one single struggle can take it out. Gardevoir, on the other hand, is much more troubling. It's a special attacker, can lower my defenses with Psychic, and boost its own stats with Calm Mind. This makes it the real run killer. I carefully keep my health up with healing items, while also making sure that my Power Guard doesn't run out. Once I get two consecutive turns, I finally land a struggle, but this does less than half due to the Calm Mind boost. I have to use my next turn to heal up, but then Gardevoir gets the defense drop. So I'm basically stuck just healing up every turn praying that Gardevoir doesn't land a crit. Luck was on my side though, as I had a few close calls, but somehow pulled through. Eventually, I had an opening. Magikarp was at full health, still having an attack boost. Since Gardevoir's Calm Mind had now worn off, this struggle was powerful enough to finally get rid of that green fairy. I knew that Benny's last Pokemon was a physical attacker, so I wasn't too worried about Gallade. We tank its attacks much better than Gardevoir's. Within a few turns, Magikarp lands a second struggle to finish Gallade off while just surviving the recoil damage. Yeah, that same Magikarp who couldn't beat a Munchlax just soloed a team of four powerful Pokemon. We've come a long way, and even if I don't think we can beat all of this challenge, I was still proud of my fish. Just up ahead, we find Kamado, who's our next opponent. And just like Benny, Kamado has four powerful Pokemon made up of two physical and two special attackers. His team is tough, although I was feeling confident. At least until I got crit on my first attempt and lost. Nice. But to be honest, this fight goes pretty much the exact same as Benny. I have to carefully manage my health and power guard while waiting for an opening, but by now, I can do that pretty well, and we gradually take out Kamado's Pokemon, who can't overcome the monstrous power of my fish. Kamado bows down, begging for mercy, and just like that, the worst Pokemon in the game had claimed another victim. This clears us to finally reach Spear Pillar, where we find the demonic god of space, Palkia. Looks powerful, right? Well, we caught it in a single Ultra Ball. But to deal with the Dialga that comes afterwards, we're going to have to craft an Origin Ball. Okay, so get ready for the burn of the century. Leanne turns up to help us find some rocks, and Melly hits him with, Yeesh, that ugly hat suits you as poorly as this important role does. Why did Melly have to go and end this man's career like that? Anyway, for this quest, we've got a rematch charm. She still has the same two Pokemon as last time, so you might be thinking that this is easy. Wrong. Her Gengar is a demon. Remember how Magikarp doesn't like special attackers? Well, Gengar is an incredibly strong special attacker who can put you to sleep with Hypnosis and drop my defenses with Shadow Ball. Even though she only has two Pokemon, this makes Charm a problem. And my luck was terrible. I was getting slapped around, but I just needed to keep on trying until my luck turned around. And after a while, this happened. Charm opens up with Rhydon, but once again, I activate my trusty trap card, Rhydon Dees. Rhydon still isn't very threatening. Magikarp can tank its attacks pretty comfortably while slowly wearing it down with struggle. The important thing with Rhydon is making sure that Magikarp has as much health as possible and as many turns of power guard remaining for when Gengar comes in. This involves a lot of stalling, but eventually I find an opening, finishing Rhydon with about half of my health remaining. Now Gengar comes out and immediately puts me to sleep. My health is too low to attack, so I'm basically caught in a loop of healing every turn. If Gengar's Shadow Ball gets a defense drop, then I pretty much lose right there. But on this attempt, that didn't happen. So I was able to keep healing until Gengar spent a turn putting me to sleep again. This gives me an opening to attack with Struggle falling just short of getting the KO. I then have to spend the next two turns healing until Gengar finally gets the defense drop. However, now it's my turn, so I take the chance, click Struggle, and like a champion, Magikarp fights through the drowsiness to finish Gengar, giving us the win. That was way harder than it had 
had any right to be. But with that taken care of, we can finish the quest to craft the Origin Ball, which kinda looks like it's made out of Magikarp scales. This lets us head back to Spear Pillar for a showdown with this monstrosity. Who would win? The Legendary, Steel Dragon, God of Time, or Fish? Obviously, Magikarp and I danced all over Dialga, slapping it across the face with my fish and a few bombs to claim a decisive victory. I honestly can't believe he's still alive. Poor Cyndaquil is so hungry. We'd saved the day and the credits rolled, but there was one more fight we needed to win. Legends Arceus has one of the toughest final bosses of any Pokemon game. On top of that, we were running out of time. Magikarp's health was in bad shape. Regardless, we pushed on, determined to finish the challenge. Before the final boss, we have to complete a few quests to obtain the remaining elemental plates. Most of these are pretty straightforward, like defeating an Alpha Vesper Quen or giving Kogita some wood. However, one of these is particularly annoying. To get the Fist Plate, we need to rematch Kamado and his upgraded team. His Pokemon are pretty strong, so it's not easy. But the worst part is that this battle takes place in Jubilife Village. Your Pokemon are fully healed when you enter the village, and there's no way to drain Magikarp's Splash PP before the battle. So we had no choice but to head into this fight with all 40 Splashes still remaining. Basically, this means that my only option here is to stall with healing items and drain my Splash PP when I have the chance. This is so tedious, as I don't have many free turns against Kamado's hard-hitting level 65 Pokemon. So this took ages. I played super carefully, and Magikarp was tanking their hits pretty well. I completely PP stalled Kamado's Golem and his Braviary before finally running out of splashes against Heracross. Now we were in the driver's seat, as Magikarp could finally start dealing some damage with Struggle. There were a few close moments, but ultimately, this fight went the same as our last one with Kamado. Although, this one took 40 minutes of my life that I'll never get back. Anyway, the last few plates are obtained by having Magikarp seduce some legendary Pokemon before shoving them into Pokeballs. With that taken care of, now Magikarp and I can take on the final boss of Legends Arceus, Volo. This is one of the hardest fights in any Pokemon game ever. Volo's team is stacked with some of the strongest Pokemon in the game, with a variety of types, moves, and insane damage output. On top of that, Volo has Giratina, who we have to beat twice, and all we have is one little Magikarp with no attacking moves. This is the final hurdle. One last challenge for Magikarp to overcome. And let me tell you, I got crushed over and over again. Poor Magikarp was getting the smackdown. But all of these losses made one thing clear. This was possible. Incredibly hard, but possible. So how on earth do we do this? Well, Volo leads with Spiritomb, a powerful special attacker that can also put you to sleep with Hypnosis. My strategy here is to immediately use Struggle for some small damage. Regardless of whether Spiritomb attacks or puts me to sleep, I can survive one turn before getting two consecutive turns of my own. I can use these to heal up and set up my Orc's Power Guard. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't use the Orc's Power Guard immediately. Well, the reason is that two boosted Struggles will usually kill Spiritomb, but by not boosting my stats for the first struggle, I put Spiritomb into healing range, forcing Volo to use his only full restore. It is necessary to get that out of the way quickly, as it can ruin me later in the fight. Surviving Spiritomb's attacks isn't too hard, so I'm able to set up my Orc's Power Guard, as well as a new item, Orc's Evasion, with this one increasing the chance that Volo's moves miss. Once Magikarp is relatively healthy, with plenty of turns remaining on my boosts, I'm clear to finish Spiritomb with a second boosted struggle. All of that was just to get rid of Volo's first Pokemon, and now he sends out an even worse one, Roserade. This thing is a run killer. Roserade is a strong grass type who knows the move Petal Dance. As we know from our troubles earlier in the challenge, Magikarp does not like to play in the grass. All it takes is a single Petal Dance, and Magikarp just dies on the spot. This is the biggest hurdle of the challenge, and so many attempts ended here. The only way I can survive is if Roserade misses or uses Spikes, although this was incredibly rare, hence why I lost so many times here. However, on the runs that were blessed by Iron Jesus, Roserade would finally miss enough times, allowing me to land the two struggles needed to take it down. Next up is Volo's Lucario. It feels weird to say, because Lucario is a beast of a Pokemon, but in this case, Lucario is great for us. See, Volo's Lucario has three physical moves and bulk up. Since Magikarp has solid physical defense, we can actually handle its attacks pretty well. This gives me a chance to make sure that Magikarp is healed up, while also having plenty of turns worth of boosts left. 
However, while we can easily take out Lucario, this introduces another problem, Togekiss. This is the third and final special attacker of Volo's starting six, and this is a stone cold killer. If it sets up a Khan Mind, Magikarp is dead to a single strong style Moonblast. It took ages to even make it to Togekiss, only to be crushed in an instant. So I needed a different approach, and this is where the fight gets really cheesy. See, if I want any chance against Togekiss, I need Volo to send it out on his turn, rather than giving him a free switch by taking out Lucario. So how do we do that? Well, by taking advantage of the most toxic strategy in Pokemon, PP stalling. Remember the first battle against Charm? We learned that when an opponent has multiple Pokemon and one runs out of PP, the trainer will switch into another Pokemon. So my idea is to stall out Lucario and force Volo to use his turn to switch into Togekiss, giving me enough time to take it out. In reality though, that's not what happened. Because after I spent ages stalling out Lucario, now Volo switches into his Arcanine. This is yet another physical attacker and I can't afford to take it down with struggle or we'll just end up back in the same spot as before against an incoming Togekiss. So once again, I have no real choice but to rely on PP stalling again. Luckily, Arcanine isn't too much of a threat, so this is pretty risk-free. But of course, once it does run out, Volo now switches into Garchomp. Garchomp is actually a little scary because it has Earth Power in its moveset. It's dangerous because it's a special move and has a chance to lower my defenses. This could have been bad, but luckily I stalled out the Earth Powers without any catastrophes. From there, Garchomp is reduced to its physical attacks, so after yet more stalling, Volo finally has no choice but to switch into Togekiss. At this moment, I was petrified. The battle had been going on for 30 minutes, and this was the furthest I'd made it. Since Volo made the switch, I get to attack first, and immediately fire off a boosted struggle, but this does less than half, which is a huge disappointment. Togekiss then connects with a Moonblast, and I'm forced to heal up. Now I've got two moves in a row, and use the first one to hit Togekiss again, just barely falling short of getting the KO. Crucially though, now my power guard has worn off, so I don't have enough HP to tank a Moonblast and attack. So I had no choice but to take a risk. I kept on healing, and Togekiss kept on firing Moonblasts. And thank god none of them crit. This let me survive long enough until I got two turns in a row, using them to heal up and set up an Orc's power guard. With a reduced damage from Moonblast, now I'm safe to fire off a struggle, finally taking out that demonic bird. While Volo still has three Pokemon, all of them can only use struggle. This means that there's no risk. I can just stall until they take themselves out with recoil. Although, it's important that my health is as high as possible for the end of the fight, as I won't be healed before Giratina. With that in mind, before long, Volo's final three Pokemon were taken out in quick succession, and we defeated Volo's base team. However, that's just the entree, because now we have to beat Giratina twice. This thing is a menace. Its attacks are all different types, split between both physical and special. I immediately set up my power guard, but Giratina just puts me right into low health. It does so much damage that I can't even risk attacking, as the struggle damage will let Giratina finish me on the following turn. Once again, Magikarp only had one option, Stall. By using an Orc's Evasion, Giratina will shift to only using Aura Sphere since that move can't miss. As long as I keep my power guard up, Magikarp can survive Aura Sphere, allowing me to heal up and maintain my boosts. But once Giratina is out of Aura Spheres, here is where it gets risky because now it uses Earth Power. This has the potential to lower my defense, and if that happens, I can lose very quickly as I need that buff to survive the onslaught of Giratina's attacks. But all I can do is believe in my fish. Until Giratina landed a critical hit, and... Magikarp just hung on. What a king! We almost lost the run right there. I could now heal back up, and Giratina was down to only Dragon Claw and Shadow Force. Two physical moves that Magikarp can tank comfortably. This means that our little fish has no trouble stalling out the remainder of Giratina's PP before it finally goes down to struggle. However, now Giratina comes back in its origin form, and I am petrified of this thing. For context, this attempt alone was already one hour long. We've had a few close calls against the previous Giratina, but this one has an even higher attack stat, which means those close calls from earlier would now instead be a loss. But I don't really have a choice other than stalling and sending prayers to RN Jesus. Since Giratina's PP is restored, the start of this fight is the exact same, with my Orcs Evasion forcing Giratina to first drain all of its Aura Sphere PP. I do have to risk a few crits, but overall this goes pretty smooth. 
And from here, those prayers to RN Jesus really started paying off because everything was going Magikarp's way. Giratina was missing Earth powers. And importantly, I was dodging the defense drops. All of the struggle, all of the bad luck in this run, it was all for this moment. And on the grandest stage of them all, my one little fish was clutching up. And once Giratina ran out of Earth powers, its fate was sealed. It's only fitting that this challenge ends with struggle, but it won't be my struggle, as the last little bit of recoil damage finally slaughters Giratina. With that win over Volo, we've finally beaten the challenge, Magikarp. Magikarp? No! Rest in peace, Magikarp. Thanks for watching. Jump into this video next for more Pokemon content. Remember to like the video and leave an F in the comments for our boy Magikarp. Ta Don't forget to check out Dragon City by clicking the link in the description to download the game for free and begin collecting over a thousand dragons today. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.